Hello guys and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and met Monica and she was like, hey, we've got a cool uh, thing for you to join. It's the literature club that she's starting up. So, uh, it seems like something else happened last episode. Oh yeah, our entire world crashed down on us after we found Sayori dead. Spoilers, I guess, but I don't know why you're here. This is the 10th episode of the series. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, that's your bad. Anyways, it seems we're sort of... We've sort of restarted everything over again. But this time, Sayori isn't present, and there are only three members of the Literature Club instead of four. So things are freaking out, and we're just gonna wait and see what happens. Uh, before we get into this, there are a few things that I want to go ahead and mention really quick. First of all, if we go ahead and uh, check load, I guess that's not really a good way of um, checking it because I already put a save file right there. But uh, if you had clicked load game after everything glitched out and before saving anything, you'll see that your save file is completely gone. It's completely empty, there's nothing left in the slot, and there's not really much we can do about it. You can try to cheat your way out of it, but I'm gonna save mentioning that until uh, a bit later in the series for reasons. By the way, just to make things simple, I'm going to be referring to the different acts of the game like a theater or a stage play or a show production or a movie in act. So back when we thought this was a normal dating sim, uh, up until Sayori died, that was act one. And now we're in act two. So just for simplicity's sake, that's what I'm going to call them. At the end of act one, uh, Sayori's death. During that, the protagonist will always blame himself for Sayori's death. And depending on what you chose during Sayori's confession, he'll blame himself for a different reason. If you said, I love you, then he'll say things should have stayed the way they've always been. And if you said, uh, you'll always be my dearest friend, he'll be like, oh, I should have given her love and support and stuff like that. Anyways, an interesting thing that happens is that when we find Sayori dead, the protagonist is like, this isn't a game where I can go back and try to get a different outcome. But as the player, that is something that we can try to do, right? Well, if you try to load your save file during Sayori's death scene, you'll get the message, Sayori.chr is missing, or something along those lines. I'll put it up on screen. And that's a really interesting message. Now we're going to get into something really freaky and weird. If you go on into Steam and you right-click on this game, and you go to manage and then browse local files or something similar, it might be different for you, then it'll open up a file on your computer that has a bunch of different f files from the game. The first interesting thing that we have to look at is the characters folder. If you open it up, you'll see that indeed Sayori.chr is missing. Secondly, if you look through the game files before this point, at the very beginning of the game, you'll see that there's nothing wrong with it. It looks pretty normal. On the final day, uh, right before Sayori is found dead, if you go ahead and look into the files, there will be an image file called Happy Thoughts, but the A in Happy and the O in Thoughts have been replaced with X's. If you open up this file, I'll just let the image on screen speak for itself. Anyways, we're like five minutes into the video now, and I haven't even actually progressed the game any further. There's so much to this game that I have no idea how I could explain it all. Uh, if you want to learn more about this game, uh, because inevitably I'll forget about something, and just to, you know, look at stuff from the original sources, I'll of course leave my sources in the description. There's this one video where this guy deconstructs DDLC and looks at all of the different things that it does, and it's really cool. Uh, and then, of course, the DDLC fan wiki is also a good resource that you could go check up on. Also, one thing that I should probably mention is that during Sayori's death scene, you'll see in the background it says that the game has crashed and you need to go check the trace back. 
And if you look in the files, you'll actually find traceback.txt. And if you open it up, it seems pretty normal from what I can tell. But near the end, it seems like a character starts talking to us. They say, oh geez, I didn't break anything, did I? Hold on a sec, I can probably fix this. I think. Actually, you know what? This would probably be a lot easier if I just deleted her. She's the one who's making this so difficult. <laughs> well, here goes nothing. Anyways, let's get into the actual game. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back! I'm pretty sure that uh, glitch right there has a rare chance of happening. And I brought a guest with me. Eh? Uh, a guest? Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, MC. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So, let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? Wha- No, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. A anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So, I ran into MC in the classroom and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica! Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to... Well... You know... Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, MC? So that's interesting. Previously, in Act 1, Sayori set up this whole scheme where she was like, Hey Natsuki, make sure to bake these cupcakes because a new member is coming. And then she went to MC and was like, Hey, you need to come here because... Natsuki is making cupcakes. But now, in Act 2, since Sayori no longer exists, Monica didn't really have time to tell Natsuki to go bake any cupcakes. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So, I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club full, fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised that there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to, to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry. The teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I... I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh? Th that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know? I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, MC, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I, I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. 
Natsuki's head perks suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take, an take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? That's a really good line right there. And then she immediately segues into, Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp at something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. <laughs> I'd expect... I'd expect that from you, Yuri. Interesting, last time she said I wouldn't expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called, Don't say it out loud. And give that back. Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no! Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open your, up to your readers, expose, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of, of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Uh, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of Vice President, after all. Here's another difference. Since Sayori's not here to take up the Vice President role, Yuri takes it up instead. So now we can kind of see the hierarchy of the Literature Club. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, MC? Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but uh, I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at and... Um... I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I thought... <laughs> eh? The girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, MC. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four, and I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. And if we don't find one more member before the festival... I... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. 
So if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, MC? Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. MC, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Ah, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. MC, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Alrighty, the poem game! So, for this one, the way the poem game works is you have to impress one of the three... one of the two girls, and you do that by picking different words that each of them like. If you get 45 points for one of them, then they'll love your poem. If you get less than 29, they'll hate the poem, anything in between, and they're just kind of eh on it. So, for this one... I want to go ahead and go down Natsuki's route, because she's technically, statistically speaking, the least likely the least likely one for you to have seen. Even though I'm sure a lot of people have been down her route, it's not especially hard to go down either one of their routes, because Natsuki's words are always super cutesy, and Yuri's are always super long and stuff like that. Like, for example... Or not even long, but just words that you wouldn't typically use on use on a day-to-day -day basis. So, for example, something like, I don't know, maybe vacation or something like that would be a Natsuki word, but a fulgent would be a Yuri word. So I'm going to go ahead and save my game here. And I'm going to see if I can get down Natsuki's route. So, summer? Yep, that was an easy one. Skirt? Uh, Papa? Pink, play, ribbon, milk, pure, dream, no that's a Yuri word, darn, let's see, strawberry, or strawberry, excuse me, let's see, boop, Parfait, Kitty, Nibble, Hair, Doki Doki, Candy, Jumpy, and... So anyways, that's going to be the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and in the next episode, we're going to share our poems with everyone for the first time. Absolutely the first time. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!